All right, like I told you guys before, I do record these videos. Uh, in fact, let me show you where you can find them real quick. Come on, canvas load. Courses. You should be able to click on Happy's videos, which will take you to it. Oh, it was already there. Uh, lecture content to the midterm. This is what we did on Tuesday. This was a link to YouTube, so it's uploaded there. What else is different, because uh, I didn't have anything to write then, is the notes I'm going to do on this paper. I'm going to take over and scan them after class, and I'm going to upload as well as well. I don't recommend that as a reason to not take your own notes. You should very much take your own notes uh, because the process of writing down what you see and it's got to go through your brain a little bit more and you actually learn it a little bit better. Uh, but if you need it as a backup, you can see what I wrote. All right, so equations. Equations have an equality symbol. Equations have an equal sign. Five X minus two equals negative seven. If at any time I go too fast, please say something. If I'm off the screen, please say something. If you don't understand something, say something. For equations, what we want to do is, they always say solve for the variable. In this case, solve for x. What that really means is isolate x or get it alone. Kind of like a stalker within a bar. Isolate your prey. Lauren's got that stalker look. She's in there already. Roofing Ryan Reynolds and shit. If you see Ryan Reynolds in the bar, do roofing him. Yeah. That's, that's, hell, I'd probably roof him. I'm straight and all, but he's good luck. All right. So the way we do this, we've got a couple things going on. I've got this to deal with and this to deal with. We can do them in either order, but it's usually best to move the addition or subtraction first. By doing the opposite. So I had five X minus two equals negative seven. What I mean by doing the opposite, sometimes I put the little bar on the seven. I'll do that there to indicate it. Here we are subtracting two, so instead we are going to add two. And what you do to one side, you gotta do to both sides, because we gotta keep it equal. You can draw a line underneath it, put draw, bring the equal sign down. Some people like to do a nice, like big vertical line. That's your cup of tea. Do whatever it is. I usually just do an arrow. Negative two plus two is zero. Those cancel out. Equal and opposite cancel out, which is why we do the opposite. So we're just left with five X over here. Negative seven plus two is negative five. <clears throat> Then we deal with the number in front of the X. For five X, five is called the coefficient. 
C-O-E-F-F-I-C-I-E-N-T. That's efficient with C-O in front of it. For this, we can either A, divide by it, or B, multiply by the reciprocal. And I'm going to do both here. R E C I P. No fucking pencils today? You hurt my feelings. You know I like making fun of that. Yeah. That's why I didn't do it. I bet you did. I bet they're in there. No? I bet they're in there. Van Helsing and shit. This fool brought he brings like do you have them with you? Rose the first day, come on. Man. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do the divide one first. This is multiplied by the five. I'm going to divide by the five. And whatever I do on the left, I got to do on the right. The idea with fractions is if the number's on top and bottom, they cancel. The fives cancel and they're <laughs> left with ones. The left side just becomes X. The same thing happens on the right. The fives cancel, and we're left with ones, and one divided by one is just one. There is a negative sign, so make sure you got the negative there. X is negative one. It's not day one, it's day two. You didn't come on day one. It's day one for me. All right, reciprocal. The reciprocal of five is one over five. Because five is the same thing as five divided by one. And then reciprocal means flip it. Like if we had two thirds and we did the reciprocal, it would be three halves. How do we use this here? I'm gonna go back up to that five X equals negative five. And we're gonna multiply both sides by one fifth. <clears throat> and five is the same thing as five over one. The same thing ends up happening. The fives cancel and we're left with X. The fives cancel on the right side, we're left with negative one. Generally, most people do divide when this is a whole number. And they do the reciprocal when it's a fraction. Because fractions divided by fractions are pains in the asses. In fact, we will have fractions later today. What do I say to fractions? But fractions.
Everybody stands for finish. I don't see anyone's pin moving, so does anyone need a longer? Okay. If you do, you gotta say something. Uh, let's see, the next one is 20 minus 6x equals 0. I'm going to show this two ways. And you can pick the route that you like best. The traditional way is to do get rid of the add, subtract. Right now we're adding, there's an unspoken plus sign there. We are adding 20 to the left side. So doing the opposite of adding 20 is subtract one. I will subtract 20 from both sides. And I'm left with negative 6x equals negative 20. Then we divide by the number in front. It is negative six. Make sure you divide by the negative. Two negatives make positive. This ends up being 20 over six. Which simplifies, but I'm gonna get to that in a second. The other choice is it's really, really easy to forget the negative when you divide by the negative six. Students will divide by six and leave the, the just the negative sign will disappear and they will have negative 20 over six. The way you avoid this is instead of moving to 20, move to 6x. I have negative 6x here. I can add 6x to both sides. And then now when I divide by the six, I don't have to worry about that minus sign. And I have 20 over six equals X. <clears throat> These two are equivalent. You can flip which side of the fraction or the equation sign it's on without problem, as long as it's an equation sign. When we have inequalities, which we'll do another day, you have to track stuff a little bit more. Inequalities have the little alligator sign on it. All right, so we don't want to leave it as 20 over 6. Uh, this does reduce. 20 is 2 times 10. 6 is 2 times 3. We can cancel out the twos in a pair, and we're left with 10 over 3. You should check to see if it goes further. If you can break down the number into its the things that it multiplied to it, called the factors, you should. 10 is 2 times 5 over 3, but nothing cancels here. So that is the simplified form. I hope the homework takes that. They may want you to write it as a mixed number. The idea of writing as a mixed number is see how many times three goes into 10. And you can just write it out each one. I got three plus three plus three is nine plus one. That's 10.
I'm going to write that as 9 plus 1 over 3. And fractions you can pull apart like that. The idea of breaking it up into numbers that are the same as the thing on the bottom, called the denominator, but I'll say bottom most of the time, is because the number on top, the numerator, is evenly divisible by it. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I have 3 plus 1 third. As a mixed number, this is 3 and 1 third. They don't write the plus sign. That is the same way. These are also equivalent. That's a mixed number, and that's an improper fraction. And the only reason I did that last little bit is I don't know if Alex requires mixed numbers or not. I'm perfectly fine with the improper fraction when tests. There's no point in doing extra work. This is usually the most usable form if you do anything else with it. Unless you're an engineer and then you probably want a decimal. But that one sucks as a decimal. You guys ready for more? Yeah, it's unending. Yeah. As a decimal, that actually brings up a good point. Uh, as a decimal, this is... You can write it, uh, do it in a calculator, it's 10 divided by 3. The fraction turns into division. This is 3.33333, and it just keeps going, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. The way they do this is they write it with the repetition bar. They will write 3.3 and put a bar over it. The repetition bar means repeat what's underneath it. <clears throat> So like if I had 5.272727, it kept going like that, we would put 5.27 in the bar over both of them. You guys ready for some more? A couple of people's pins are still gone. All right. Next example. Let's kick in it up a notch. 4x plus 3 equals 8x minus 7. Now we've got x's on both sides. We want to gather the x's on one side. You have two choices. Choice A, move 4x. Choice B, move 8x. Either works. And sometimes you can look to like a lot of people like the x's on the left, because that's usually how we usually write the answer. If I want the x's on the left, I have to move the 8x over. And if I move the 8x over, I've got 4 minus 8, and I'm going to have a negative number. I don't like that, just because it's easier to fuck up. So the good choice is to move the smaller one. 
is a good choice. So I will move for X. Four X minus four X is zero X. And I, with a zero, I don't need to write it. And then eight X minus four X is four X. And we still have the minus seven. Make sure you bring down everything else. Now we can get x by itself by adding seven to both sides. Three plus seven is 10. And finally, we divide by the four. This gives me 10 over four, which equals x. And I can write that as x equals 10 over four. I can switch the sides. This is not simplified. 10 and four are both even numbers. 10 is five times two and four is two times two. So some twos cancel, leaving behind a one. And I get five times one on top, which is five, two times one on bottom, which is two. So five halves equals X. Are we having fun yet? This is just, hell yeah. I am gonna hold on, go home and tell my spouse what happened, what happened we had today. You guys should tell your loved ones too. Class was just so fucking awesome. You guys ready for more? Okay. Again, let's kick it up a notch. Here, when you have parentheses and a number outside, there is an unspoken multiplication there. Unlike mixed numbers, where they're not multiplied together, parentheses, you make them multiply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the six and multiply by the X and we get six X. And I'll do this step a little bit slower. We're also gonna do the six times the two, and we have six times two. On the right side, I have five times X, which is five times X, and then five times negative one is five times negative one. You will normally skip this step as you get comfortable doing algebra. But I wanted to point out what I'm doing just in case, make sure everyone's on the same page. So six times two is 12. And five times negative one is negative five. Now we're gonna do like we had it. Now it looks similar to a previous example. We still have X's on both sides. Uh, we've got numbers on both sides. Like before, I wanna move the smaller coefficient one. Five X is smaller than six X. So I'm gonna move the five X by subtracting it. 
if you want to do the 12 at the same time, you can't. We're moving all the x's to the left, which means I want to move all of the numbers called constants or constant numbers to the right. I'll do that by subtracting 12. You don't have to do them in the same step, but up here we had to do this twice and it, adds, it takes up longer to get to one line. So it'll save you some page work. We're adding vertically, 6x minus 5x is 1x. 12 minus 12 is zero. 5x minus 5x is zero x. And negative five minus 12 is negative 17. Anything with a zero, we don't need to show. And when the coefficient is one, we tend to not write. Coefficient is one of those words that it's math jargon, but I'm just going to keep using it because it's shorter than saying the number out front. So you just have to get used to that one. Does anyone need this up any longer? Is anyone still writing? Okay. Yeah. Let me give you guys one to try and then we'll do it together. I'll give you guys like five minutes and we're gonna make it a nice little clusterfuck just because we can. We'll take a break in about 20 minutes. I try to take the break on the hour. Give you guys five minutes to stretch, go to the bathroom, whatever. If you don't think you're taking your test, I'll be back. I'm sure they just stood in the other time. Okay. You know what you need to do is keep a little like drawing pad in there and just have like one draw sketch on the first page. So then you don't look like a pencil in the app. Thanks. 
no one left to review on Raymond Resident and said I was very abusive to students. Oh, okay. You're the only one I picked on. I know you knew that we got it. A couple of people didn't like last semester. One of the complaints was too much harm. There's nothing I can do about that. Well, there is. Alex has it, so if you already know shit, you don't have to do the homework. Alex, is that like the program? That yeah. <clears throat> so if you weren't here on Tuesday, when you log into the homework for the first time, it'll make you do an initial knowledge check. There's 25 questions. Give yourself like maybe two to three hours. It might take you less time. It might take you longer. But take it seriously because every question you get right there, they're not going to give you homework on later on. They ask questions basically from different topics throughout the semester. So like if you know how to do all the shit at the beginning, all your homework gets really fucking easy. So spend two hours in the beginning, save fucking 80 hours over the semester. You had your hair brushed back and you deliberately brought it forward to make it look messy. <laughs> painting is that like auto body or yeah, that's, uh, it, it's not even painting brand it's just a like a, a door they just have it it's something okay. yeah they don't even sell okay. it it's just the name of the brand is peters they just make it when they say painting they made a book brand I read it. my girlfriend got it ah. Says my name on it. I, yeah, I saw the name on it. That's why I thought you maybe worked there or something. <laughs> no, I don't work. It looks like it works. You know, you know what I mean? That's why I like it. You can look employed when you're not. <laughs> I hate to go grocery. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start. Most people either are finished or are at a stall point. What we're going to do is go through and distribute for each parentheses. So we've got 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Two negatives make positive. And this negative right here has an unspoken one. So if you want to put the one there to help with the multiplication, you have negative one times x, which is negative one x, or just negative x. And negative one times four is negative four. We still have the equals negative eight.
Variables with the same exponent are called like terms. And they can be combined. One way to do this is to put them all together next to each other. And then I'll put all the whole numbers together or the constants together right here. Group them up by what they have. This next step is not necessary. You can skip it, but I want to illustrate what's happening. This is the same thing as doing five minus eight minus one times X. And here I can add these together already. Negative 10 plus six minus four is negative eight. Pulling out the X is called factoring. Factor out the X. You normally won't write that step. You'll jump straight to the next one where you do five minus eight minus one. Five minus eight is negative three. Negative three minus one is negative four. All right, now we've got everything cleaned up. We can continue as normal. I will add eight to both sides to move my constant over. Negative eight plus eight is zero. And then I will divide by the coefficient. What is zero divided by negative four? Zero. Zero divided by any number is zero. Zero times any number is zero. Zero is a great number. In fact, have you guys all heard of the uh, Pythagorean formula? Pythagoras, old, old mathematician. They didn't have zero back in the day because it's not a number that you add with. You don't add zero to anything. It doesn't make sense to add zero and when dealing with real world shit. But when you take away shit, like if you had four apples and you took away four apples, you had no apples left and they didn't have any way to describe that. Zero almost made him go fucking crazy. In this book I had on the number zero. Someone bought, I didn't buy the book for on the zero, but someone gave me the book on the zero. Interesting. So X equals zero, final answer. Ready for some more? Four minus three fourths X. Oh, look at this motherfucker. He brought fractions. Okay, well, I can still move the four over by subtracting four. And I have negative three fourths X equals negative six.
Now, if we did what we did before, we would divide by negative three fourths. Dividing by a fraction sucks. So instead, multiply by the reciprocal. Flip that over. Because this turns, if I cancel out the negatives, this turns into four times three over three times four X, which is something I would skip normally, but I want to illustrate what's going on. Oh, the negative is going to go away here. To do the six with the fraction, I'm going to write it as six over one, because that's the same thing, times four over three. And you can see the fours and the threes cancel, leaving behind one. I could simplify this here a little bit before doing it. Six is two times three. And then cancel out a three. So I'm just left with two times four on top over here. The left side is just X because all the numbers went away, which is by design, that's why we did it. And the right side is two times four over one. Eight over one is I didn't show this on any other steps, but maybe they should have. You can always check your work. <clears throat> check. Plug in the number. Plug in the solution. That's what they're called, solution. Four minus three fourths times eight. Does that equal negative two? Once you've simplified this, you could do this as three times eight is 24 divided by four. That is a six. Four minus six, does that equal negative two? Negative two does equal negative two. So X equals eight is a verified solution. Verified it solves the equation. Has anyone watched a lot of Walking Dead? Like, like to the point where the whisperers show up? Look at Davis real quick. Does he not look like Beta without the mask on? Like, you put a mask on him, he looked like Beta. Have you seen? I, I haven't seen. So I, I, I'll have to put up a picture of Beta later on. It's played by Ryan Hurst. At least facial. I don't, I don't know about body structure. Ready for another one? We're still writing. Patience. Okay, I think everyone's done. All right. Uh, oh, well, that was easy. Oh, what the fuck? It's easy. Excellent. All right. Rather than trying to add 315s to 11 tenths, fuck all that. When you got a bunch of fractions going on, up fractions.
find the LCD, which is the least or lowest common denominator, and multiply everything by it. <clears throat> LCD is, I don't know if it's least or lowest. I think it's least. So a nice little simple way of finding it is write down all the denominators. We're going to make a little table. We're going to make a table of the factors. Five is just itself. Fifteen is five times three. And I'm trying to line up numbers with the numbers above them. If they, we already have a number that's a factor above, put it underneath it. 10 is five times two. I already have a column for fives. I don't have a column for twos and I don't wanna line up the two with the three because I want the columns to just be one number. The LCD is one from each column. Five times three times two. Five times six, which is 30. I'm going to multiply each of those things by 30. I can make it a fraction like that. Now, this can be a pain in the ass. What we're really doing at this point is you want to simplify the 30 and the 5. Simplify these. So, like, the idea is to make the denominator at the bottom go away. 30 is 6 times 5, and we're going to cancel the 5s. And I have 6 times 4x, which is 24x. Six is also the same thing we had right there. If we filled in the gap, that would be a six. So a shortcut is just multiply the numerator by what's in the gaps, if you do the table. If you don't do the table, that doesn't work. Here, 30 is 15 times two. And we multiply that by the three times five or 15, the 15s cancel, and I have minus two times three is minus six. The gap here was a two. So if I multiplied negative three by two, I would get negative six. On the right side, 30 is three times 10. And the tens cancel, and we're left with three times 11 is 33. And that's the gap right here. I took the three and multiplied it by the 11, I'd have 33. Now we made this a whole lot easier. There's no more fractions. This is just a basic equation. We add six to both sides. Divide by 44. You wanna see if it simplifies. So try to write out the factors of each. 
24 is four times six, which is two times two, that's four, and six is two times three. So that's the 24. 39 is divisible by three. This is three times 13. So here a three will cancel. And I'm left with 13 on top and two times two times two is eight on bottom. And let's take a five minute break. I'll take a pause. All right. Next one. This is a very common type of problem, believe it or not. For example, a word problem that's very much related to this is Jimmy takes six hours, let's just say Jimmy, there's a bill in it, six hours to paint a room. James, oddly enough, there's both nicknamed Jimmy, takes eight hours. How long to paint the room if they work together? This is a word problem that's like related to this. Which is why there's problems like this in Blakely's online textbook, which we're using. He just didn't write the word problem. I don't know if he's going to segue to it later on. I haven't got through the whole book yet. Same issue though. Fuck fractions. Now, here, we could find the LCD. We talked about that already, and then multiply by it. Or just multiply by both denominators. Which is a little quicker. I don't need to find the common denominator. It doesn't take that long to do, it's 24. But six times eight is 48. And that's much quicker to do. I'm gonna multiply everything by 48, including the right side. And this is effectively 48 over one. If I multiply the left side by 48, I gotta multiply the right side by 48. And conveniently, when you do that, it's literally the other denominators. If there was three fractions, you'd have to do them both, but 48 over six is eight. And 48 over eight is six. If you don't use the LCD, you will always have to simplify. If you do, well, unless there's more shit going on on the right, but usually there isn't. If you use the LCD, sometimes you don't have to simplify. The reason why I use a curly T sometimes is the T looks like a plus if you just write like a normal T where it looks like a cross. This is 14T equals 48. We divide by 14. And we get t equals 48 over 14.
The bottom is two times seven. And I'm gonna use that to help me guide the top. 48 is only gonna simplify if it's divisible by a two or a seven. Can we divide 48 by seven evenly? No, if you go through the multiples, you got seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, we skip it. It is divisible by a two though. 48 is two times 24. So the twos cancel and we get 24 over seven. Now, if I were to do the word problem here, having a decimal answer is stupid. This is the one circumstance where I say calculator's better. Because does 24 over seven hours mean anything to anyone in this room? No. But 24 divided by seven is <laughs> 3.43. That means approximately. When you round, or pretty much if the calculator looks like there would be more numbers if it kept going, uh, you would want to use the approximately symbol. Equals is only reserved for equals. But now that would make more sense. 3.4 hours. Well, it's less than six and it's less than eight. It should take less time. If Jimmy took six hours and James is helping him, it should take less, less than six hours, right? This section is taking a little longer to go through than I thought, which is fine. I'm glad I started with it. There's a lot of terminology I want to make sure everybody knows before we I get good for the rest of the semester. Make sure everyone's refreshed a little on fractions, distributing, going a little bit slower with it. Is ready for Why do you know that it's easy to break into the UC Davis acid room? Because I worked at the UC Davis McQuality's lab next to the Nicolaidi lab. Okay. I don't know if you were saying that earlier or not, when it, but like, I missed it. I got to talking and that's a good reason to know. Yeah. Otherwise, this is some creepy ass shit to know. I mean, you never know when you just with a dead body. You know, you're right, you don't. It's expensive to bury people and cremate them. Just well, that's one way of thinking. I was thinking it was a whole like big ass. Yeah, so it takes a lot of time, right? They think it's a big ass wall. You got to lift him up. I assume that like it's not where you could fall in, so you'd have to lift them up and put it in. Yeah. So you got to be able to lift the body. Yeah. Exactly. The... So you probably have to have a third person, like another person with you, and then you have to push them in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's like they'll know. Right. That's how. Can't have any witnesses. Oh, uh, you're just like my friend. He said, you can call me any time of day, even in the night, because we are really close friends. I was their, their, their wedding officiant for their marriage. 
And he says, but if it's a very dead body, we need to be good to dig a hole in that big enough for both of you. Because I'm not going to be an accomplice and leave any witnesses. That's where the friendship line was drawn. I call for help with the dead body, digging a hole for two. He means business. Definitely business. All right. So I can find the LCD here and multiply through it. I can multiply by all the numbers together, multiply through it. But if you can recognize that all the denominators are related to one of the other denominators, you can save yourself a lot of time. Four goes evenly into eight, and two goes evenly into eight. So we could just multiply this whole thing by eight. I'm sure there are math teachers that'll get really mad at me for doing it like this. Normally, you would write parentheses on both sides, put the eight on both sides. Here, I like it this way. We just deliver, de distribute the eight to each of these. So I have eight times X minus one over eight minus eight times X over four equals eight times X minus two over two. I'm just showing that step because you may skip it up to you. The eights here cancel, and that is just x minus one. Eight divided by four is negative two, or there's a negative eight. So negative eight divided by four is two. We got an x. And the eight divided by two is four, and we still have x minus two. And the, the way this works, I always get confused about this. And the way this works, we can't distribute into the parentheses where the goal is about it, right? Like I couldn't go, like at the beginning there, I couldn't. You could. You could. Let me do that step in a second. Let's finish what we're doing here. Then I'll go back and add what you're doing. You're like talking about like right here or right here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Doing it over here seems kind of silly, but you can't do it. Let's show it. But let's finish what we got here. There's nothing multiplied by this x minus 1, so I don't need parentheses there anymore. And here I will distribute. I've got 4x minus 8. So we're going to combine like terms. X and negative 2x is negative x, negative 1x. And I've got negative 1, and then 4x minus 8 still on the right side. <clears throat> now, I want to end up with positive coefficient. If I subtract 4x over, I'm going to end up with a negative one. So instead, I'm going to add the eta, or add the negative x over by doing the opposite. And since I moved my x's to the right, I'm going to move my whole number of your constants to the left. I'm going to do the opposite of negative 8. I'm going to add positive 8 to both sides. Negative 1 plus 8 is 7. Finally, we divide by five and we get x equals seven fifths. Which you could check by plugging in. Although I don't think I want to do it, it's tedious, but it is doable. Maybe if we're done at the end of the day, I'll come back and do the check for you. We still got plenty of time. Yeah. Okay, so Davis asked, 
Davis, right? Yeah. Let's go back to Davis's question. We had this. And I think what you were saying is, can we do this? Distribute the 8x like this, right? Yeah, that's the idea. You still got to have it over the big fraction. You can, yes. This is, this is a yes. But it's easier to fuck up here because you got to remember to separate these. This is now 8x over 8 minus 8 over 8 minus 8x over 4 equals 8x over 2 minus 16 over 2. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So doable, but tedious. The idea of multiplying by that LCD is to get rid of dealing with fractions. And so let's just roll with that. Like we could have not even multiplied by eight and dealt with fractions right off the gate from here. That's that. If I were to do that, I probably would have done it there. But it does work. Ooh. Word problem. The manager's monthly income. Or a, let's say a liquor store. Fuck it, why not? <clears throat> Is $4,200 which includes a base salary of 3,000. And 2.5% of all sales. What were the sales during the month? Okay, so we know he made $4,200, or she. And salary is what you get when you're ignoring hourly. Managers usually do salary. If you've never had a job, salary is opposite of hourly rate. You just get paid a fixed amount no matter how much you work. It should equal the $3,000. But $3,000 isn't enough, so we must be adding something to it, right? Reasonably, without reading the rest of the sentence, something else must be added to $3,000 to get up to $4,200. It just doesn't magically increase. I wish it did. I wish my wallet did that. 
what is it increasing by? There's my 3,000. The and kind of turns into a plus. So it's doing 2.5% of all sales. When working with a decimal or a percentage, I'll write it as the percentage for now. Total sales, uh, we gotta give it a letter. S looks like a five, I don't wanna use S. I'm gonna use T for total sales. T equals total. Those, that should be what we get. Now, instead of working with the percentage, we that's not something we work with. So to convert from a percentage to a decimal, you have to move the decimal to the left twice. This becomes 0 0.025 without the percent symbol. Okay, so when you're working with decimals, I mean, you could get rid of the decimal, but at this point, you're probably gonna want to fucking calculate anyway, so we're just gonna treat it like it is. We're gonna subtract 3,000 from both sides. And I get 1,200 or 1,200 equals 0.025t, and then we will divide by 0 0.025. Well, 100. I'm getting 48,000. Someone else has got a calculator. Check that for me. Okay. And we want the dollar sign because it is in terms of dollars. This is what Davis needs to dress up for is Halloween. Mm -hmm. Beta. Sorry. Just need to let the hair grow out a little bit. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you do watch like watch more of what he does, you can see what he actually wears. Because he's got like a long like leather, I think it's a trench coat, black trench coat. He's got like a purplish what? Like the Undertaker. Um, it looks kind of like the Undertaker, yeah. He's got a purplish shirt, and underneath it is a Have a Nice Day t shirt. He came out with a full, oh, you beat that big kick ass. I don't like to celebrate Halloween. Uh, they don't want me to be that close to kids. That was a joke. It's a sick joke, yes, but it was a joke. All right, you guys ready for more? Just see the looks on people's face fall when they ask how my Halloween was. I said, oh, we don't do trick or treaters. We do do trick or treaters. So we can't have kids come that close to the house. I, I, I can't be within 500 feet. Fucking Stu's just going fucking crazy. All right. The length of the rectangle. is three less than two times the width. If the perimeter is 18 feet, What are the dimensions of the rectangle? We'll write down the problem, then we'll break this down into what we got to do. Different than last semester. Also, oh, last semester we started with like integers and boring shit. Straight away we got word problems. We started. That was Tuesday when everybody else showed up to class and Jimmy couldn't have been bothered. Didn't message me or email me. Could have dropped you, you know. But I knew you were going to come. What is that green drink and where is it from? Uh, it's the human being who needs uh, like red bull and syrup, basically, but it's sugar free. What kind of syrup? Um, blue raspberry and pineapple. It's called the mermaid. Uh huh. It's called what? The mermaid, like mermaid water. It's cool. Pretty good. Blue raspberry and pineapple does sound like it'd be pretty good. It is. I mean, to me, it's good. I don't know what it, if you can have sugar. Like, I don't know what it would taste like if it would taste different. But like everything, I it's sugar free. Why is blue raspberry a thing? Raspberries are not blue. I'm waiting for them to create it. Right. Like, I mean, they genetically modify foods anyway. There's yellow watermelon. Like, make it happen, scientists. Right. All right, so back to the thing. Uh, maybe we don't know what's going on, so let's draw a rectangle. Let's start with what a rectangle is. It's a square, but the sides aren't all equal. Opposite sides are equal. I'm sure you all know what a rectangle is. You don't need the, the Jeopardy answer for a rectangle. But if I call this the length, then that's the width. And opposite sides are equal, which makes this the length, and that the length. Oh, width. Already fucking up. And those are a little longer, right? I don't want to use all that for an equation or anything. So I'm going to use L for length. 
and W for width. Perimeter is the outside edge, total of outside edges. And we usually call it P. So if I start at one corner of the rectangle and go around it, I've got L. And then I add a W to it. And then I add another L. And then I add another W. And so if I like combine like terms, I have 2L plus 2W. If you've memorized formulas for rectangles, perimeter, and area, that's tend to be the one that you do. And the problem tells us that this is 18 feet. Now to solve an equation, you can't have more variables than you have equations. Right now we have two variables, L and W. We don't know what either of them are. And we only have one equation, the 2L plus 2W equals 18. But we do have a relationship between length and width. The relationship is given up here. It says the length of the rectangle, L, is, in word problems related to math, is is almost always an equal sign. The question is, what, how do we write three times less, or three less than two times the width? Well, we want, we're going to have two times the width, and then we want three less than it is, take away three. So two times the width minus the three. So what I can do is I can take this L and these L's are the same. So I can take that L and replace it with 2W minus 3. Replacing is called substituting. That's the math jargon they we like to use. Substituting or substitution. Well, now we only have one variable now. We only have W's in it now, which is good. That's what we want. So we can solve this by distributing. We collect the like terms. We add six to both sides. Divide both sides by six. And I get W equals four 
And the perimeter was in terms of feet. So the width is in terms of feet. Have we answered the question? There's more work. Always make sure you've answered the question. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? Dimensions are length and width. We don't have the length yet. But we do have a relationship between the length and the width that we've already made the equation for. So we're going to go and take that and plug that in. And the length should be 2 times the width minus 3. And if I wanted, I could go ahead and draw the rectangle and add up the sides and make sure that I still get P equals 18 feet. So the answers are length is five feet, width is four feet. Everybody good? I'm going to finish off the day with a video. Yeah, you know. What the fuck? Inside oh, it's an ad. Novel income strategy from a leader in innovative solutions, BAPR, the symbol of alternative income. I mean, college. Well, that was the major, which means I had to write a lot of papers. Now, when a normal student writes a paper, they might spread the work out a little like this. So, you know, you, you get started maybe a little slowly, but you get enough done in the first week that with some heavier days later on, everything gets done and things stay simple. And I would want to do that like that. That would be the plan. I would uh, I would have it all ready to go, but then, then, then that, that should the paper would, would come along, and then I would kind of do this. And that would happen to every single paper. But then it came my 90-page senior thesis, paper you're supposed to spend a year on. I knew for a paper like that, my normal workflow was not an option. It was way too big of a project. So I planned things out, and I decided I kind of had to go with something like this. Let's have a year we go. So I'd start off like, and I'd bump it up in the middle ones. And then at the end, I would kick it up the high gear. Staircase. How hard did it just walk up the stairs? No big deal, right? <laughs> but then funny thing happened. Those first few months, they came and went, and I, I couldn't quite do stuff. So we had an awesome new revised plan. And then then those middle months actually went by, and I didn't really write words. And so we were here. And then two months turned into one month, which turned into two weeks. And one day I woke up with three days until the deadline, still not having written a word. And so I did the only thing I could. I wrote 90 pages over 72 hours, pulling not one, but two all-nighters. Humans are not supposed to pull two all-nighters. Sprinted across campus, dove in slow motion, and got it in just at the deadline. I thought that was the end of everything. But a week later, I get a call. It's the school. And they say, is this Tim Urban? And I say, yeah. And I say, we need to talk about your thesis. I say, okay. 
And they say, it's the best one we've ever seen. That did not. It was a very, very bad thesis. I just wanted to enjoy that one moment when all of you thought this guy is amazing. No, no, it was very, very bad. Anyway, today I'm a writer, blogger, guy. I write the blog, wait, but why? And a couple of years ago, I decided to write about procrastination. My behaviors always perplexed the non-procrastinators around me, and I wanted to explain to the non-procrastinators of the world what goes on in the heads of procrastinators and why we are the way we are. Now, I had a hypothesis that the, the brains of procrastinators were actually different than the brains of other people. And to test this, I found an MRI lab that actually let me scan both my brain and the brain of a proven non-procrastinator, and, I, and so I can compare them, and I actually brought them here to show you today, and I want you to take a look carefully to see if you can notice a difference. And I know that if you're not a trained brain expert, it's not that obvious, but just take a look, okay? So here's the brain of a non-procrastinator. Now, here's my brain. There is a difference. Both brains have a rational decision maker in them, but the procrastinator's brain also has an instant gratification monkey. Now, what does this mean for the procrastinator? Well, it means everything's fine until this happens. So the rational decision maker will make the rational decision to do something productive. The monkey doesn't like that plan. So he actually takes the wheel and he says, Actually, let's read the entire Wikipedia page of the Nancy Kerrigan Tanya Harding scandal because I just remember that that happened. Then, then we're going to go over to the fridge. We're going to see if there's anything new in there since 10 minutes ago. After that, we're going to go on a YouTube spiral that starts with videos of Richard Feynman talking about magnets and ends much, much later with us watching interviews with Justin Bieber's mom. All of that's going to take a while, so we're not going to really have room on the schedule for any work today, sorry. Now, what is going on in here? This gratification monkey does not seem like a guy you want behind the wheel. He lives entirely in the present moment. He has no memory of the past, no knowledge of the future, and he only cares about two things, easy and fun. Now, in the animal world, that works fine. If you're a dog and you spend your whole life doing nothing other than easy and fun things, you're a huge success. And to the monkey, humans are just another animal species. You have to keep well slept, well fed, and propagating into the next generation. Which in tribal times might have worked okay. But if you haven't noticed, now we're not in tribal times. We're in an advanced civilization and the monkey does not know what that is. Which is why we have another guy in our brain the rational decision maker who gives us the ability to do things no other animal can do. We can visualize the future. We can see the big picture. We can make long-term plans. And he wants to take all of that into account. And he wants to just have us do whatever makes sense to be doing right now. Now, sometimes it makes sense to be doing things that are easy and fun, like when you're having dinner or going to bed or enjoying well-earned leisure time. That's why there's an overlap. Sometimes they agree. But other times, it makes much more sense to be doing things that are harder and less pleasant for the sake of the big picture, and that's when we have a conflict. And for the procrastinator, that conflict tends to end a certain way every time, leaving him spending a lot of time in this orange zone, an easy and fun place that's entirely out of the make sense circle. I call it the dark playground. Now, the dark playground is a place that all of you procrastinators out there know very well. It's where leisure activities happen at times when leisure activities are not supposed to be happening. The fun you have in the dark playground isn't actually fun because it's completely unearned and the air is filled with guilt, dread, anxiety, self-hatred, all those good procrastinator feelings. And the question is, in this situation with the monkey behind the wheel, how does the procrastinator ever get himself over here to this blue zone? A less pleasant place, but where really important things happen. Well, turns out that the procrastinator has a guardian angel, someone who's always looking down on him and watching over him 
in his darkest moments, someone called the panic monster. Now, the panic monster is dormant most of the time, but he suddenly wakes up. Anytime a deadline gets too close or there's danger of public embarrassment, a career disaster, or some other scary consequence. And importantly, he's the only thing that the monkey is terrified of. Now, he became very relevant in my life pretty recently because people of TED reached out to me about six months ago and invited me to do a TED talk. Now, of course, I said, yes, it's always been a dream of mine to have done a TED Talk in the past. <laughs> but in the middle of all this excitement, the rational decision maker seemed to have something else in his mind. He was saying, are we clear on what we just accepted? Do we, do we get it? What's going to be now happening one day in the future? We need to sit down and work on this right now. And the monkey said, totally agree, but also let's just open Google Earth and let's zoom into the bottom of India, like 200 feet above the ground. And we're going to scroll up two and a half hours till we get to the top of the country so we can get a better feel for India. So that's what we did that day. And six months turned into four, and then two, and then one. The people of TED decided to release the speakers. And I opened up the website, and there was my face staring right back at me. And guess who woke up? So the panic monster started losing his mind. And a few seconds later, the whole system did mayhem. And the monkey, who remembered, he's terrified of the panic monster. Boom, he's up the tree. And finally, finally, the rational decision maker can take the wheel and I can start working on the talk. Now, the panic monster explains all kinds of pretty insane procrastinating behavior, like how someone like me could spend two weeks unable to start the opening sentence of a paper and then miraculously find the unbelievable work, work ethic to stay up all night and write eight pages. And this entire situation, the three characters, this is the procrastinator's system. Not pretty. But in the end, it works. And this is what I decided to write about on the blog just a couple of years ago. Now, when I did, I was amazed by the response. Literally thousands of emails came in from all different kinds of people from all over the world doing all different kinds of things. These are people who are nurses and bankers and painters and engineers and lots and lots of PhD students. <laughs> And they were all trying to do the same thing. I have this problem too. But what struck me was the contrast between the light tone of the post and the heaviness of these emails. These people were writing with intense frustration about what procrastination had done to their lives, about what this monkey had done to them. And I thought about this and I said, well, the procrastinator system works, then what's going on? Why are all these people in such a dark place? Well, Turns out that there's two kinds of procrastination. What we're going to talk about today, the examples I've given, they all have deadlines. When there's deadlines, the effects of procrastination are contained. In the short term, because the panic monster gets involved, but there's a second kind of procrastination that happens in situations when there is no deadline. So if you want to have a career, you want to be a self-starter, something in the arts, something entrepreneurial, there's no deadlines on those things at first. Because nothing's happening at first, not until you've gone out and done the hard work to get some momentum, to get things going. There's also all kinds of important things outside of your career that don't involve any deadlines, like seeing your family or exercising, taking care of your health, working on your relationship, or getting out of a relationship that isn't working. Now, if the procrastinator's only mechanism of doing these hard things is the panic monster, that's a problem because in all of these non deadline situations, Panic monster doesn't show up. He has nothing to wake up for. So the effects of procrastination are not contained. They just extend outward forever. And it's this long-term kind of procrastination that's much less visible and much less talked about than the funnier short-term deadline-based kind. It's usually suffered quietly and privately. And it's going to be the source of a huge amount of long-term unhappiness and regrets. And I thought, you know, that's why these people are emailing, and that's why they're in such a bad place. It's not that they're cramming for some 
project. It's that long-term procrastination has made them feel like a spectator at times in their own lives. You know, the frustration is not that they couldn't achieve their dream, it's that they weren't even able to start chasing them. So I read these emails and I had a little bit of an epiphany that I don't think non-procrastinators exist. That's right. I think all of you are procrastinators. Now, you might not all be a mess, like some of us. And some of you might have a healthy relationship with deadlines. But remember, the monkey's sneakiest trick is when the deadlines aren't there. Now, I want to show you one last thing. I call this a life calendar. That's one box for every week of a 90-year life. Not that many boxes, especially since we've already used a bunch of those. So I think we need to all take a long, hard look at that calendar. We need to think about what we're really procrastinating on, because everyone is procrastinating on something in life. We need to stay aware of the instant gratification monkey. That's a job for all of us. And because there's not that many boxes on there, it's a job that should probably start today. Well, maybe not today. <laughs> you know, sometime soon. Thank you. I challenge you guys this semester, it's not easy to try to not procrastinate. I give a week on homework, a lot of teachers get a lot of time. If you get it done early, you'll be happier. I know when I was a student here, uh, I tried playing video games and then rushing on homework. And the video games were less fun. I knew in the back of my head I had shit I had to do. I had a paper to write, I had home math to do, history to do. The weekend I did all the homework first and then played video games, it was all fucking different. Playtime was more fun because I didn't worry about a goddamn thing. There was no like, oh, I got shit to do. Getting the work done actually took less time because when you're sitting there going, fuck, I've only got, you know, it's due tomorrow and you're staying up late, you spend waste time thinking about how it's due and it'll constantly come up, oh, fuck, I've got four hours. Oh, no, I got three hours. You do a lot of like wasting time and stressing yourself out or an instant deadline where if you just do it ahead of time, it's done and then play time's fun. So something to think about for the semester. Uh, I will see you guys Tuesday. Have a good week. Let's fuck out. I like his little talk. Appreciate you. Thank you. If you want, you can, if you want, there's a couple options. If you don't have anything from two to three and want to see it, you can come sit in on it. Okay. Or I'm going to be uploading the videos, also putting them in Canvas. It's going to be in your task before, so I already have if you don't have, if you've got it now, you don't need to take it. Oh, okay. So it won't need any of those tests on that one? No. no. Okay, perfect. Wait. You shouldn't be signed up for it if you've already passed. I'm not signed up for it. That's yeah, you don't have to worry about support. I saw yeah. something that was due and it's a support class. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. It does apply to you. It doesn't apply to you. Awesome. Yes, sir. Okay. I was going to say the, the question I had from earlier was more I'm. This is like a really 